Hey, hello. Welcome once again to Stuff and Things, where I like to talk about stuff and occasionally even things that are good for Bradley. And today is a Pleasant Sunday Smoke. And on this Pleasant Sunday Smoke, I am smoking... I can't tell you that. Because, at long last, I have finally made my decision. The decision on which pipe blend will replace my beloved Elizabethan. She's no more. She's gone. I've had to say goodbye. I'm going to have a very private funeral ceremony at some point during the next week. But for now, if you've been following along with the channel, you've seen that I've been very exhaustively testing various tobacco blends to see which one can be my daily driver. Not necessarily my favorite vapor of all time, not necessarily the most flavorful, not necessarily the most exciting or interesting, but just the one that I can... That, that won't let me down, that on a daily basis, when I don't know what I want to have in my pipe, I can pick that and I won't be dissatisfied. I've got it here. It's under this handkerchief on this handy little tray. And I have just recorded the video, or I will just record the video, in which I reveal at long last which of the three GLPs blends that I had narrowed it down to is the new daily driver. We started with Stratford, we did another video, we did an initial review of Stratford long ago. Then we did a, an exhaustive test of Stratford. Then we did an exhausted, exhaustive test of Telegraph Hill. The last one to test was Fillmore. That was the one I liked the most out of those three when I initially reviewed them. It's not necessarily the winner though. Maybe it is, I don't know, I can't tell you. Well, actually I do know. But you will know on Wednesday, when you actually see the video, I will remove this handkerchief with a flourish and you will see which blend is my new daily pipe blend. So stay tuned for that. That's gonna be exciting. So I'm smoking that. I'm smoking it in my brand new Briarworks pipe. This is my little dark blast billiard. I like this pipe quite a bit. Um, I did the initial, I don't know if you'd call it a review, but my initial impressions of the pipe. I'm enjoying it. I think I said that the stem was vulcanite, but it's definitely not. I can tell it's acrylic. I don't know what I was thinking. Um, there are some other shapes that I might look into. I liked their, I don't know what they call it exactly. I would call it a bulldog, but I think they call it like a bull something. <laughs> I can't remember what. There's like a bull moose they have. I think that's what it was called. That was bent, but there's another one that's just like a bulldog shape. I can't remember what they call it on their website, but I like that. They had like a brown blast that I might look into. So that could be a fun little pipe. I like these as a great alternative to some of the European makers. Um, they're reasonably priced and I don't feel like if I'm out in my truck and I'm running around, I feel kind of weird about having my 1962 Dunhill with me. It just seems like eh, maybe that's not the best idea, even though it's fine. You know, nothing's going to happen to it, probably. But this is kind of knock around price, pipe price without being that quality. Like it's actually of, of really good smoking characteristic. It has very good smoking characteristics. Um, so yeah, I'm enjoying this pipe quite a bit and I might look into getting some more Briarworks pipes in the future. Now on this special Sunday smoke, I guess it's not special because I'm not actually revealing what this blend is, but it's a special occasion because I have finally chosen a, a, a new tobacco blend. Um, I'm going to intersperse some of your Ask Stuff and Things questions with the main body of the show. Before we get to any of that, though, it's going to be kind of a show-and-tell sort of episode. I showed you this pipe. You already saw it. I showed you this, but you didn't get to see it. Um, I'm going to show you some other things, and they have to do with some of the questions that I've been asked. But, very briefly, and I know you all hate it when I talk about the Seahawks, so for this segment, when I do talk about the Seahawks, I'm going to speed up the video by two, or no, by one. It'll be twice as fast as it would normally be. You ready? Here we go. So, the Seahawks beat the Green Bay Packers on Thursday Night Football last week, or this week, no, last week, yeah, last week. So they have an extra long week for them to rest, and now they get to play, or they have to play, the Panthers, who seem kinda up and down. Maybe not the best team in the world, but they're playing in Carolina, but Seattle has done well in Carolina in the past. It's not the same team anymore. They're still running the ball like crazy. They have the highest rushing average, rushing yard average of any team in the NFL right now. Everyone else is talking about the new NFL. They're looking at the Rams, they're looking at the, uh, the New Orleans Saints and saying it's offense, 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 it's crazy passing yards, it's you know scoring 40, 50 points a game, that's the new NFL. If you're running it all the time, it's not going to work, you're not going to win that way. And the Seahawks are 5-5, five five. they've had very close games, every game they've lost has been very close, it's been within one score. 
I don't know. I think they can get better. It looks like Doug Baldwin is finally back to his old self. It seems like he's finally healthy. Chris Carson's coming back, um, getting healthy again. Penny was looking good. Procise is looking good. They have so much running power. Wilson didn't play great against the Packers, but in the fourth quarter, he really came through and looked really, really good. So, yeah, I'm hopeful. And a lot of teams lost who their loss, their loss benefited us when they lost. So in terms of wild card action, things are looking pretty good. So I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic, and I hope that they can pull it through. So that's, I think, at 10 o'clock Pacific time on Sunday. So by the time you're watching this, the game will be over, and you will know whether or not I'm a fool. End double time segment now. So there you go. That was the Seahawks part of the show. Now, we have a couple things here. I'm looking over there because I have a box. I got a message from basically a Luxurious Bastard. Where is that? Luxurious Bastard Company, Bastard Beard Co. on Twitter, and he wanted to send me a box of things. Ugh. And I said, okay. It was from a company. I don't normally take things from personal people, personal people, from, from uh, the citizen, the average citizen. But people who own a company, I will take something because it's, it's a way for me to highlight their product. Now, Dave, the man who sent this to me, or David, AKA Mr. Luxurious, as he says here, he was hoping I would open this box on camera. And I'm slightly frightened of this idea. I don't know what's in this. I'm assuming they're beard care products because that seems to be what Luxurious Bastards does. Um, Dave could be a maniac. I have no way of knowing this for sure. He seems fine. I watch some of his YouTube videos. Um, so look up Luxurious Bastard uh, on YouTube, on Instagram, on Twitter. And uh, we're gonna see what this is. We're gonna check, check it open. We're gonna chuck it open, cut it open. That's the word I'm looking for. Uh, there's a lot, of, a lot of shipping stuff going on here. <clears throat> Let's see if we can just slice through this without slicing my finger off. Where's the actual seam here? All right, let's see what we got. My handy Leatherman Skeletool. Okay, it looks like there is some sort of missive. Let's read it. <clears throat> uh, the most interesting man in the world, Dos Equis guy. I don't think I've ever seen one of those commercials, and I know that probably sounds insane to you guys, but uh, he's like an old, like, Spanish-speaking man, right, or something? Hello, my good friend Bradley. Stumbled on your YouTube channel after researching some Daniel Elizabethan. Love it, I was hooked. Also, following your plays channel as well. I love a good RPG game myself, maybe once a year. Anyway, I was placing an order on smoking pipes and decided to double up my order and send you a few cans. Not sure if you would even enjoy these blends or if you tried them yet, but anyway, enjoy. And don't forget, get luxurious, my friends. Owner, David, Mr. Luxurious. P.S. Check inside the... The... Blah, 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 the Mal... Oh, MacBaron tin. Okay. All right. Thank you, David. Thank you very much. I was assuming these were going to be your products that you wanted people to see, um, but this is pretty cool. Uh, and very, very nice of you. Very generous. Um, Uh-oh. <laughs> right off the bat, we've got MacBaron Vanilla Flake. And is this the tin he wants me to look inside? Uh, I don't normally smoke aromatics, but let me see. Is this open? Oh, it is. <gasps> What's going on? There's a card. Beard care products. Uh, it's a luxurious bastards card. We've got beard oil, beard balm, beard wash, beard combs. And inside the tin... Oh, he faked me out. So it's not an aromatic pipe blend. It is... Some double bubble, which is crazy. I haven't seen this since I was a small child. I didn't know this even existed anymore. Double bubble bubble gum. Uh, this is, oh cool. It's a pipe tamper. Very cool. And this is 10 ounces of gold. Oh, it's a lighter. Hey, look at that. That's very cool. Thank you, David. I appreciate that. You faked me out on that one. All right, we've got more in this box. Uh-oh, I almost revealed, well, you can't see that. I almost revealed the tobacco blend that you can't see yet. All right, we're gonna put this over here in a safe spot. We have another little thing here. Enjoy, David, Mr. Luxurious. Thank you, David. Thank you indeed, you're quite luxurious. We have a blend here that looks familiar to me. I think it's Dunhill Standard, let me check. What the hell's going on? Where does it begin and where does it end? It's like the universe. 
Oh, no, no, no. Look, this is Savinelli Essencia Cipriota. There you go. I have not reviewed any Savinelli blends, and this is a big tin. This is like a, I want to say two ounce. Oh, 100 grams. So that's like under a little under four ounces. That's a lot. That's a lot of tobacco. Cool. What else we got here? Ah, very nice. Ugh. It is Presbyterian mixture melange. Cool. Very exciting. Ugh. We've got, wow, we've got several more. Wow. You know what? I was totally expecting this to be, here are my products, please show them on the channel, which I would have been happy to do. Um, but you guys should definitely check out Luxurious Bastards. But he just decided to send these along. And these are things that I can definitely review on the channel. We have got, oh my God, what's going on? So, uh, okay, Bruno Flake by Savinelli. Oh no, Brunello Flake. For a second I thought it was St. Bruno Flake. Brunello Flake by Savinelli. Very cool. We have got, mm. Aha, Jubil okay. Giubilio, Giubilo di Oro, Giub, Giubilo, Giubilio, Giubilio, Giubilio di Oro. Also by Savinelli, they have a pipe that uh, bears that moniker or a pipe line. And then, uh, yet again, uh, okay, Doblone di Oro. Dablone? Dablone? I don't know how to pronounce these Italian words. Another Savinelli blend. So obviously, you're being kind of sneaky here, David. I'm sure you probably want me to review these blends, and of course I will. Um, I actually got another couple blends to review as well, so I've got a whole big queue of tins in hand. Okay, that's Elizabethan. That doesn't, that doesn't work. A whole big stack of things that I can review on the channel, and these will all be coming up. So thank you very much, David. That was very generous and much appreciated, and I will certainly get on doing those reviews uh, pretty soon in the future. All right, but we have other things. We have other questions to get to. Let's just say that right now we are into the Ask Stuff and Things part of the program. Remember, if you have a question for me, tweet at SAT Bradley with the hashtag Ask Stuff and Things, and I will try to answer your question on the Sunday Smoke. First up. Okay, awkward cut there as I had to jump up and replace the battery on my camera with the AC adapter, which probably means that the audio is really buzzy and crappy now. I'm sorry, gang. Uh, I think my batteries are on their last legs. I had two different batteries. I went through one doing the first video and the second one only lasted, I don't know, 16, 17 minutes or something. So I'm gonna have to replace those. Hopefully you can put up with the buzzing audio if the buzzing audio indeed exists. But let's get to this first ask stuff and things. I guess we've already done one or two, but now, we have a question from Davey. Um, he's requesting a particular voice. This is Davey T, and he wants the chicken lady from Kids in the Hall. Okay, uh, it's been a while since I've seen the Kids in the Hall or any chicken lady skits, but I will do my best. <coughs> Here we go. Do you still use your Timbuktu passenger bag for work? I was thinking of getting one and was wondering how it was holding up. Um, I think I showed you guys the Timbuktu messenger bag on, I, I must have, or else he wouldn't be asking this question. Uh, it was a cool messenger bag that I was using for work, but I stopped using it. I actually got something else, something new. Uh, let me pull this patch off. And we have here, mm, this is the Camelback Hog. H-A-W-G, uh, H period. It's a H period, A period, W period, G period. I'm not even sure what hog stands for. Um, but it's one of their reservoir packs. So it has this thing in the back here that you can unzip and put a three liter bladder, a reservoir bladder. It's the military style one for Camelback. And then there's a little tube that'll come out there are different various holes or places you can route it through and you can suck on that if you want. I don't have it in right now. I'm actually just using this back pocket as a, as a compartment. Um, but I got this actually because 
In the summertime when it gets really hot and I need to be drinking water all the time and there's not water on site, I do construction, um, it just sucks having to carry like tons of water bottles. So I figured I could get a big three liter reservoir, have it in my backpack, backpack and just suck on that all day. Um, but it's also quite convenient and nice. I like it has another big compartment here. It has a nice compartment here for organization and things like that. Um, another smaller pocket here where I keep keys, wallets and stuff. Um, lots of little bells and whistles. You can cinch it down. Um, there's like a sternum strap. There's a waist strap. Nicely padded. It's a nice backpack. I like it quite a bit. Um, it's Cordura nylon. I can't remember which weight it is. Uh, I got, look, look, I got my little Washington State patch on there. That's cute. Um, but yeah, it's a great, great backpack. I think it's very comfortable. I like it quite a bit. And that's what I've been using. All right. Let's move on. This next question is from Tyler, at Tyler 94421877. Now he's requesting a voice too. He says, please do a cinematic trailer voice. <clears throat> In a world. Hold on. <clears throat> Mm, uh. In a world. Okay, I'm ready. Do you listen to music while smoking your pipe? By the way, I would highly recommend you check out Seersucker by Cornell and Deal. Um, do I listen to music when smoking my pipe? I'm normally, I'd say 70% of the time when I'm smoking my pipe, it is in my vehicle. And I'd say about 80% of the time when I'm in my vehicle, I'm listening to podcasts. So that's primarily what I'm listening to when I'm smoking my pipe. Um, but music, yeah, sometimes I do listen to music as well. And if I am listening to music, it's sometimes I'll just put my, I, I still am old fashioned in that I own all my music. I don't use Spotify. I don't use any streaming services. So Every track I own is on my phone and I will put my phone in my little hands-free thing and I will go to songs and I will go to random and it's like a fun little lottery, like what's gonna show up and there's a lot of skipping because there's just certain things I don't wanna hear at any given time, but it's fun to be like, oh, here's, uh, I don't know, here's the Cribs, here's the Rolling Stones, here's the Kinks, things like that will just pop up and it's fun to be surprised. All right. Here is a question from Sarah. Now this was via DM on Twitter. I would prefer tweets because with the DM, uh, you have to like request, if I'm, if I'm not following you, then you have to request that I accept the message and it becomes this whole process. A tweet is easier and like I'll see it more easily. Um, but she says this, you've had the Apple AirPods for a while now. Do you still like them? More fountain pen videos, please. Um, yes. I don't have them with me right now, actually, but I have been using them way more than I thought I would, actually. I initially got them just to be kind of hands-free. I like listening to things as I drift off to sleep, and before I would have the cord on my headphones, and invariably I would move around and it would like yank my phone off or it would yank the headphones out, and it was just kind of a hassle and sort of annoying. Um, and so I got the AirPods, and I thought I would just be using them for that, but I use them every single day now. They've become kind of indispensable and I didn't think that would be the case. They have amazing battery life. So you can listen, basically I'll have one in. I usually have one in my right ear all day when I'm at work. And you know, if I'm not doing anything that requires constant communication with somebody else, I'll be listening to a podcast. If I get a phone call, I can answer it and it's right there. I can talk hands-free and work. Um, the battery lasts for a good three hours of or even more of just continuous music or podcast listening, then if you take that ear AirPod out, you can take the other one that's fully charged, put it in your ear, throw that one in the case, and within 15 minutes, or I think it's four hours it lasts, and then if you throw it in for 15 minutes, you get three more hours. So it just lasts forever, really great battery life, decent sound, and yeah, I'm using it all the time. When I'm shopping, like going grocery shopping, I have one in my ear. It's making it so I'm constantly listening to something now, which is, maybe good or bad, but I just keep one in one ear so I can still hear what's going on in the rest of the world. And then you do a little double tap, it'll pause it if somebody's talking to me. So yeah, I use them a lot. I like them a lot. All right, next one is from Jeremiah Dorsey. Jeremiah, that sounds like a mountain man. He says, 
I'm relatively new to pipe smoking. Just the other day I tried Warhorse. I was really looking forward to it from the initial tin note. Sadly, when I lit my pipe, I immediately got nauseous. Has this ever happened to you from any particular blends? Nauseous. The only time I've ever gotten nauseous from smoking anything was when I was a freshman in college and my brother sent me a care package which included some whiskey and some Nat Sherman Naturals cigarettes. And I had never really smoked before in my life, like never had in my life. And I was like, oh, okay, I will try these fancy boutique cigarettes. I didn't really know anything about cigarettes or tobacco or anything. Actually, no. When I was eight, oh no, this was before, I had smoked before, but I hadn't inhaled. That was the thing. Um, and I tried one of those cigarettes and I inhaled it and the room spun and I got super dizzy and I felt higher than I had ever felt from taking any substance I'd ever tried, uh, probably before or since, and I got very nauseous. And that's the only time that's ever happened to me. So maybe you were inhaling a bit without realizing it and you're just not used to nicotine because nicotine can make you feel nauseous. It can make you dizzy. It can make you feel like you're gonna throw up um, if you're not used to it. So that might be it. Um, this, is this the last one? This is the last one. This is from at Dan Hod underscore. He says, ah, what's your PSN ID? Will you be playing Red Dead Online when it comes out? PSN is the PlayStation Network. I only recently got that PS4 to play Red Dead Redemption 2. By the way, continue watching, please. The series on Stuff and Things plays for Red Dead Redemption 2. It's quite good. I love that game. Um, so I have not delved at all into the online network for the PSN. Um, I must, I bought Bloodborne on PSN, so I must have signed up. I can't remember what I used as my name. Um, if I ever do get to the point where I'm online, and I may check out Red Dead Online when it comes out, I'm not totally sure yet. Um, I may or may not let you know. I don't know if I want my PSN to be public or not. We'll see. Um, cause then I'll get like a thousand friend requests from people, probably good people, people like you, Dan Hod, but maybe also some weirdos, some crazies, some freaks. And I'm not sure if I can deal with that. When I had my Instagram public for a while, cause I just didn't think, it's just like, oh, it's my Instagram. Um, I started getting all sorts of follow, re or not even follow requests cause I didn't, it wasn't, you didn't, it, was, it wasn't private so you didn't have to request. People just started following me and commenting on things and I was like, oh, yeah, I guess that'll happen when you're on the internet. So we'll see. Um, but anyway, gang, we've been going for a while. There was something else I was going to bring up, the whole Thanksgiving thing. Um, I hope you guys had a good Thanksgiving if you were in the United States. Mine kind of sucked because I had a cold, which I'm still sort of recovering from. And I pulled a muscle in my shoulder-ish area, like back here. And so I was like, eh, I couldn't really move or like turn my head or shrug my shoulders or put my arms above my head. It was annoying, um, so it was not a very pleasurable experience. The food was good, the company was good, nice to see family and all that stuff. Uh, I have a little niece, a little weird redheaded baby niece that runs around. Well, she doesn't run around, she like crawls around. She's amusing, uh, but other than that, yeah, it kind of sucked and I slept a lot after I ate because I did not feel well and moving was painful and sitting was painful and standing was painful. But anyway, that's enough about that. No more complaints, there's a lot going on. Make sure, gotta cover this again. Uh, yeah. Things are happening. Make sure to watch the video on Wednesday where I will reveal at long last my daily smoke. Make sure to continue watching the Stuff and Things Plays channel and the Red Dead Redemption 2 series. Stay tuned for all these blend reviews coming up in the future. And thanks again, Dave from Luxurious Bastards. Let me make sure I get this name right. Luxurious Bastard Company beard care products. Look him up, give him your business, seems like a great guy. But anyway, gang, thank you so much for watching. I've been a good friend Bradley, you've been the audience and stuff things on a pleasant Sunday smoke. I'll see you later. Yeah. <laughs>